everyone, and welcome to Community Journal. We are very happy that you've joined us, and um, we've got an awful lot to talk about today. A lot going on here in Harwich. There certainly is, judging by all the oh paper in front of us. Oh, my goodness. Right. And, uh, you know, we've had, uh, of course, here we are in October, and uh, just this past night, uh, well, yesterday we reached a high of 78 degrees, and this morning it was under 50 degrees. So it's crazy weather out there. It really, it is. really is. It's a roller coaster. It's a real roller coaster this time of year. But, uh, you know, the trees haven't started to change around here yet. We're not, uh, we haven't really entered the foliage season here. It's just uh, way up north that it has really uh, peaked. We're not for a few weeks yet, but uh, it will eventually be with us and uh, just have to get ready. Yes can't believe that we changed the calendar to October. Here I, we are. I can't either. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, um, before we start, I just want to uh, uh, give you an announcement right at the beginning. We have a lot of announcements today. And uh, this, you know, every year we talk about this, and it's really important. It is. Um, Halloween is right around the corner. And uh, there is a boutique costume donation drive, and that happens every year. You know, there are some kids and their folks just can't afford these. Some of these new costumes are really expensive. Yes, they are. I was shocked when I was shopping. Yes. And this boutique drive happens to get some great costumes uh, in their wardrobe uh, and donate your gently used Halloween costume for kids in need. And we've announced this before, but the time to uh, kids to, uh, to pick up their costumes now is Friday, October 18th from 5 to 8 p.m. So people have been donating. I think they could probably use some more, but yes. uh, Friday, October 18th from 5 to 8 p.m., uh, kids can pick up uh, their costume, and they are still accepting costumes, so uh, everything will be free. There's no charge, and for more information, you can contact the Harwich Community Center at 508-430-7568, 508-430-7568. And that sort of segues into the Halloween party that's coming up. It does, but just before you do that, Jack, I'd just like to mention that if you're out shopping or you're shopping online, yeah. order one or buy one and donate it and do it before October 18th. Nice. That would be nice. It really yes. would. Because yeah. not everybody has parts and pieces and costumes in their homes, but Yeah, they do certainly... accept capes and, and stuff like that. They you do. Know, accessories. Yes, yes, and you can buy those as well. But if you can't, if you don't have them, you could just go out and buy a few things and bring them in before Absolutely. October 18th. Yeah, that would be great. And, uh, you know, speaking of Halloween costumes, there is going to be a Halloween party. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to be on Halloween. What a great time to have a Halloween party. Uh, at 4.30 p.m., uh, there'll be trick-or-treat here around the building, food crafts, parade, and prizes. Uh, there is a coloring contest going on now. And uh, also, guess the amount of candy corn in the container that's out front. So there's all kinds of things going on uh, for a safe... Halloween celebration. It's free and fun for all. So, uh, And the decorations out in the oh, yeah. lobby are just amazing. They really are. So, so come on by. Come on by. And that's for sure. Bring a costume sure. with you when you do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that would be good. <laughs> well, our, fir <clears throat> our first piece tonight, uh, today uh, will be a library update. Emily sat down, Emily Milan sat down with Ann Carpenter. An update as to what's going on over at the library. Let's take a look. Hello, Harwich. I'm Emily Milan, Assistant Director at Brooks Free Library, and I'm here with my coworker Ann Carpenter, our Youth Services Librarian. And we have come to give you a little information on what's coming up in October at the library. Ann, do you want to kick us off with some children's programming? Sure. We've got two special programs um, coming up in October. all your princesses and princes to the library. Um, it's going to be a very fun time. Think about it sort of like as a birthday party, except there's no birthday girl or birthday, birthday boy. Um, so we're going to uh, make some sparkly crafts. We're going to play some prince and princess themed games decorate some cookies. Um, it's going to be a great time. Um, because we are going to be decorating cookies, if you have any f um, food restrictions, if you could call us um, at 508-430-7562, extension 2, or email me at acarpenter, just like the woodworker, at clamsnet.org. Um, we do manage to accommodate most food restrictions, but we need to know ahead of time. 
Um, and that, again, is going to be October 12th at 2 o'clock. Because there is the potential for a large number of kids to be interested, we are asking people to register ahead of time, which you can do by going to our website, brooksfreelibrary.org, um, finding our event listing. And our event listing, um, if you look at October 12th, it'll say Royal Party. You can click on that, and there's a nice, easy little way to just sign up. Um, for the party. If you don't have internet access or don't feel comfortable doing that, you can always call me at 508-430-7562, extension 2. And assuming that knights and dragons are also invited, uh, not yes. just prince and princess. Okay, Any great. kind of royal, you know, if you've got Anything a royal fame then. and you are 100% <laughs> um, encouraged to dress up in your best princess or prince awesome. or dragon or knight mm -hmm. outfit because that just makes everything more special. Awesome. That sounds um, like a it is going to be so much fun. We did it a couple of years ago, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and speaking of a lot of fun, one of my favorite events for the entire year, like I look forward to it for like 11 months out of the year, is our Halloween parade, um, which is fantastic. And it is going to be Thursday, October 31st, imagine that, on Halloween. Um, at 1030. Um, it is a program for young children, so preschoolers, toddlers, babies, um, to come. You dress up, your, dress up your little kid in their super amazingly cute outfit <laughs> and bring them to the library. Um, we will then cross this, uh, we'll do a little story time, we'll read some Halloween themed books, sing some Halloween themed songs, and then we'll go across the street to the town hall and trick or treat at the town hall, which thank you um, as always to the town hall employees who have candy yeah. for us. Um, and you've been to it many times. It's yes, one of the cutest things we do all year. It absolutely <laughs> is. And it's so fun not only to see the kids, but to go to Town Hall. And all of the different departments are so excited to greet the kids and hand out their treats. Um, I think my favorite costume last year was we had a baby um, in a stroller dressed as a fortune teller. And she had her yes. little magic ball and her <laughs> turban. Yeah, absolutely adorable. So the costumes are um, to die for. Always fun to see. And um, thank you to Town Hall for inviting us over. And thank you to the Harwich Police Department for getting us there safely. Um, it's always a fun event. So October 31st at 1030. Mm -hmm. No registration required. Just show up. We'll do story time first and then head out to Town Hall. Absolutely. That's awesome. We have some great adult events scheduled for this um, month as well. The Friends of the Library um, are starting back their annual or their uh, monthly first Sunday program and that starts on October the 6th this coming Sunday at 2 o'clock. They're welcoming Bourbon Sunset. Um, they're a local trio that performs a variety of music from bluegrass to classic soft rock and they'll be performing at the library this Sunday the 6th at 2 and then October the 15th which I believe is a Tuesday, yes, a Tuesday at 6.30. We have invited T&K Paranormal Investigations to the library to do a Paranormal 101 program. So they're going to talk to us all about um, the different investigations they've been on, elements of investigation, how they collect data, and um, it should be really fun. This program is kid-friendly. It's open to to visitors of all ages. We are capping the limit um, this time at 40 people, so we do ask that you register if you can. And again, as Ann mentioned, you can go right to brooksfreelibrary.org and on our events calendar, locate the event and there's a registration link right there. So you can sign up through that or you can call us at the library and we're happy to sign you up if you need some help with that. Um, so those are the great adult programs we have scheduled for October. We have some fun things coming up in November, but we'll be back before then to talk about those. So I brought a couple of things with me um, from our library of things that we wanted to show you. We have a little something for everyone. I know I personally have used some of our baking kits in the past. I think, Ann, you mentioned you've used those as well. Yeah, we got the whoopie pie one, and I brought it home, and my son and I made whoopie pies, and he was like, this is something that you can make? <laughs> which, was, which was really, it was a lot of fun. And that's the kind of thing, like, I don't, I wouldn't want a whoopie pie specific cookie pan, pan yeah. to like live in my cabinet and be taking up space for like the one time a year I wanted to use it. it. So it's great that the library has it yeah. that I can just borrow it when I want. Yeah, absolutely. And same, same thing about some of our other specialty cake pans. I know we have a pirate ship and a castle and all sorts of things that again, might not have space in your pantry for that year round, but something you want to use kind of on a one-off basis. So you can see a complete list of our library of things. Um, 
items on our webpage on the Library of Things page, and I think that links right out to their um, catalog records in the catalog, but um, you can also stop in the library. These things are located on the second floor near the reference desk. Um, they have their own section, so you can go and take a look. Some of our larger items, like the Sizzix that I brought here, um, the empty box is up there. The entire you know machine isn't kept there, so you just bring the box to the circulation desk and check it out, and we'll get all of the pieces for you. The Sizzix is a really neat machine. I haven't had a chance to, to try it yet, um, but I was talking with Emily Carter, our technology librarian about this particular um, thing from our library of things and this is like a die cut machine so there are all of these um, different templates and things that come with it you can use it to make holiday cards um, birthday invitations you know any kind of paper craft that you're interested in making so this one's really neat and again don't have room to store this at home all of the time but if I want to use it um, take it out for a week or so and make some cards or some birthday invitations this is a great thing to have. We also have um, this code reader. So this is a, an electronic, a little piece of electronic equipment that you plug in to your vehicle. And if you have a code or a light on in your car, it will come up with the, with the information here that you can look up and see what that code means. So interesting things. Like I said, we have a little bit of something for everybody. So Take a look at the complete collection um, and see if there's something for you. If you have suggestions for things that we could add to our Library of Things, there is a link on that Library of Things page for you to make suggestions as well because we want to look for things that are going to be useful to the community as a whole. So feel free to send us your ideas. And um, anything else? What do we wrap up? Um, our book groups are meeting again. We're so excited. We just picked some, some um, upcoming titles for our book groups. You can find out about that on our website. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a library-wide read that's going to be going on this month after the flood. It's going to be available in Overdrive. Um, at as many simultaneous checkouts as possible so everyone in the community could check it out at the same time. It's a really interesting piece of fiction that talks about um, global warming and flooding on the, and, and how we might be living if something like that happened. It's a really interesting title and I've challenged from Brooks Free Library to read it with me. So feel free to join us and um, we'll start a little conversation on social media about that title and what we thought. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great week. Well, we say it all the time. There is so much going on at that library. Is. We appreciate Ann and Emily sitting down and keeping us informed. Yes. No lack of activity there. That's, that's for sure. That's for sure. What do you have there, Eileen? <laughs> oh, I've got lots, Jack. Let's oh, see what I'll start with. Um, I, I'm not sure if you know about this organization, but the name of it is Nauset Nation. And they are actually a group of people who help seniors remain independent. They give a hand and they enrich a life. And they are looking for volunteers. So if you are interested in spending some time and helping others, there are some volunteer opportunities to make a difference in the lives of our seniors. They offer friendly visits, rides to appointments, tech help, and simple handyman tasks. Volunteering is easy and flexible with simple online scheduling, and you can help when it fits your calendar. Are you a year-rounder or a part-timer on the Cape? Either way, you can make a real difference. So please think about it, and if you can help, they have a waiting list of seniors who need a hand. So please help them shorten their wait by volunteering. And you can get in touch with them two ways. There is a website, Nauset, N-A-U-S-E-T, Neighbors, N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R-S, dot org. NaussetNeighbors.org, oh, or you can pick up your phone, 508 514 seven zero six seven so if you have some time on your hands and you would like to volunteer this is a great organization to do that with very good thanks Eileen the Harwich Democratic Town Committee's monthly meeting uh, will be Saturday October 5th at 10 a.m. and uh, at the Harwich Community Center here on Oak Street Sandra Milan the president of the Cape and Islands Democratic Council uh, will speak uh, to how the council is engaging fellow Democrats uh, to participate, educate, and advocate for the values we hold dear. And uh, that's the head of the Cape and Islands Democratic Council. The Harwich Democratic Town Committee meets on the first Saturday of each month uh, at the Harwich Community Center 
Uh, for more information, you can uh, contact Ray Gottwald at uh, raygottwald at aol.com. That's R-A-Y-G-O-T-T-W-A-L-D at aol.com. Or check out their Facebook page at Harwich Democratic Town Committee. So uh, that's coming up, and that's right around the October 5th. Yes, it so is. by the time you're watching this, it may have We can. There you go. <laughs> okay, very good. Well, Michael sat down uh, with Tyler Maycalf to bring us up to date on what's going on uh, with the Conservation Trust, and they talked about um, the opening of the Cornelius Pond uh, uh, Woodlands. I guess a lot of uh, work's been going on there, and uh, uh, so we're going to find out more about it. So uh, Mike, uh, Michael sat down. Uh, and Tyler with Dinah. So let's take a look and see what it's all about. Hello, I'm here with the Harwich Conservation Trust with Michael Locke and Tyler Maycalf to talk about what's going on this month with the Trust. So many things as usual. Welcome. Thanks, Dinah. Thanks for having nice us. Nice to see you. Thank you to Channel 18. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, we, have, we do have a lot of things happening uh, the, uh, all year round, and, but this uh, fall in particular, we have a number of um, exciting projects, including um, getting people out on the land. Yeah. And you have a trail opening. Trail opening. That's so, yeah. always exciting. It is exciting, right? A 15-acre mm -hmm. Cornelius Pond Woodlands project. Mm. Recall the Harwich Conservation Trust uh, a partnered effort with the town of Harwich to preserve these 15 acres with more than a, than a thousand feet of shoreline on Cornelius Pond, also called Eldridge Pond. Mm. Mix of habitats, forested mm -hmm. upland, meadow, wetland, and of course mm -hmm. that coastal plain pond shore. Um, what a wonderful diversity for yeah, wildlife and I people know. to yeah. enjoy um, wandering through. Mm -hmm. So that's possible now. Dawn to dusk, that trail is open to the public. It's accessible off of Queen Anne Road. You can see the sign there, mm -hmm. right there, that people see as they're driving by. The parking lot, which was uh, created by the town of Harwich Highway Department. Link Hooper and his team did a mm -hmm. fantastic job. AmeriCorps uh, mm -hmm. partnered with Harwich Conservation Trust and the Woodworkers mm -hmm. Club of the Chatham Harwich Newcomers. There we are gathered oh, yes. with mm -hmm. uh, town officials and Harwich Conservation Trust trustees, as well as Harwich Conservation Trust volunteers. Um, all of these folks representing um, town committees and departments, uh, and also, of course, again, our HCT volunteers all uh, working together to, to create this mm -hmm. trail. Tyler led an interpretive walk. As you can see, they're standing in part of the meadow. Tyler, tell us about some of the things we saw. Sure. Um, yeah, we had a nice walk and uh, through the forested uplands of the property and the meadow. Uh, we stopped at the former house site and talked about the former owner's commitment to conservation and seeing the property conserved. Uh, we stopped and paused to take in a view of the pond and talked about next steps for the property uh, for stewardship. We'll be installing benches, hopefully this fall or over the winter. Mm -hmm. um, and will that be done by the woodworkers group? Yeah, they'll uh -huh. benches and uh, we will install them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. They and do such wonderful work. They do a great job, it's don't they? It's extraordinary, yeah. They're great. We're yeah. so lucky to have them. Yeah, yeah. they were honored, actually, by the Harwood <laughs> Conservation Trust Board of Trustees as the 20, 2019 mm -hmm. uh, Volunteer Group of the Year. Conservation Very Trust. well mm -hmm. deserved. Yeah, yeah. They, they do a great job. Yeah. Terrific. And uh, actually, Tyler's leading another walk on Wednesday, October 9th. Is that yep. right? Yeah. That's, that's correct. Um, I believe it's full, but uh, wow. <laughs> oh, oh, <geez. laughs> so we'll just we'll just mention it. <laughs> what is the walk? Uh, we're walking around the new loop trail around Cornelius Pond Woodlands. It's a point mm. four mile trail. Point four. Yep. So mm -hmm. it's a quick walk, but yeah. it's um, mm -hmm. it's a nice way to get out and sh stretch your legs, mm -hmm. um, whether you're out birding or walking mm -hmm. your dog on a leash. <laughs> or yeah, uh, okay. just pausing to take in a, a quiet pond view um, mm -hmm. in the middle of your day. So. Mm. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So how many people do you accommodate on those walks, Tyler? Uh, well, on that property, we're a little bit limited by the amount of available. Um, I see. 
Oh, okay. And it's a uh, it's a little bit dangerous for people to park on Queen Anne Road. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But uh, folks uh, can visit that um, that new pre uh, preserve at their mm -hmm. leisure. Again, mm -hmm. dawn to dusk, uh, free and open to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be holding more guided walks. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, great, it's wonderful that we were able to partner with the town. Yes, um, and yep. create access to this new conservation destination. It is wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you mentioned uh, you saw the owner's house or house site. Mm -hmm. Who was the original owner there? Uh, it was the family, and they mm -hmm. lived um, on that property for about six decades. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're lucky to work with them. They yes. wanted to further their family vision mm -hmm. uh, of the land. Right. And so much has changed across the Cape Cod landscape since yeah. the 1930s yeah. when yeah. they settled on that yeah. landscape. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. them to work with Harvard Conservation Trust to perpetuate their uh, vision of the land was really special. Well, it's great to remember yeah. them and know, know that they were helpful with this and, yes. and uh, how generous they were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a difference it makes. Mm -hmm. It does make a it's huge difference. For all of us, yeah. yeah. Terrific. Yes. Okay. So what else do you have on your well, uh, agenda? More, more around that theme of getting out on the land. Yes. We've got some very um, interesting volunteer activities coming up, uh, mm. specific to one of our recent land preservation mm -hmm. projects that also resulted from a Harwood Conservation Trust mm -hmm. town partnership, mm -hmm. and that is the 17-acre Muddy Creek Headwaters project. Uh -huh. We're mm -hmm. um, finishing up a meadow restoration. We hope to have that site open to the public in probably by this spring. There, there's a, a mm. photo that you can see taken by Chris Simmons of Zygo Digital Films using his aerial drone. The outline of the 17 acres is in yellow, and um, beyond you see Muddy Creek. This property has about 1,400 feet of shoreline on Muddy Creek. Muddy Creek, also known as Monomoy River, as we know, flows into Pleasant Bay. Mm -hmm. So very important uh, sub-embayment of the Pleasant Bay estuary, tidally influenced mix of habitats here as well, whether it be that estuarine uh, shoreline, mm -hmm. uh, interior meadow now um, expanded and enhanced by the meadow restoration that's taken place where you see the buildings in the foreground. Those had been abandoned um, and open to the weather uh, for many years under the previous ownership. And um, they were removed uh, throughout the stewardship process um, had to do some asbestos abatement and some other uh, land management particulars, mm. but uh, really restored that site to a natural setting. Beautiful mm -hmm. meadow that has now emerged in partnership with Blue Flax Design, an ecological restoration mm. company. And there you have a look at uh, the meadow emerging. That was the before and that after. That was the house. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Wow. Tyler, wow. tell us about some of the activities coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, truly transformed, um, mm -hmm. and now that the field restoration has been successfully accomplished, uh, we are able to start moving forward to uh, provide better public access to the property. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, we'll begin on October 23rd um, at 9 a.m. Uh, a volunteer group will gather okay. and there's a variety of stewardship activities that will be taking place. Mm -hmm. uh, working on the trail and, uh, and doing where, some, where will people convene for that? Uh, the best thing to do is to send me an email at tyler at harwichconservationtrust.org mm -hmm. and then I'll know that they're coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but the property is located at approximately 21 Church Street mm -hmm. so right. um, mm -hmm. it's, okay. it's immediately on the right as you travel north on uh, Church Street. Mm -hmm. in East Harwich. Okay, and so they would register with you first. That's and then, right. And yeah. then that's show up that yes. day. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sounds great. And then you have something else in November? Or? Yep, uh, we'll have another work day, a uh, full day, with um, AmeriCorps Cape Cod on November 21st. Mm -hmm. And volunteers will be welcome to join that as well. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we'll see what we're at and what else mm -hmm. needs to be done. Um, but we're hopeful that uh, we'll have the trail looking good and the parking situated and we'll be ready to accommodate visitors in the very near future. So. Mm. It's pretty exciting. As Tyler's organizing these uh, land management work days with, with AmeriCorps and Harwich Conservation Trust volunteers, we're also working with an engineer to design the parking access. Mm. Uh, the mm -hmm. trailhead kiosk is actually in place, again, courtesy of the Woodworkers mm -hmm. Group of Chatham Harwich mm -hmm. Newcomers. Mm -hmm. So again, those um, multiple partnerships yep. making access yep. and land preservation possible. 
Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Well, I, I am always stirred by the number of Harwich Conservation Trust signs I'm seeing around. Oh. <laughs> and of course, our conversations help me be aware of mm. uh, how much everybody has been doing. Yeah. You know, you Thanks, with Adam. your leadership of it and, uh, and so many other people partnering in such generous ways. Yes. From the land, you know, of donations to the people who are working with you to make it happen. Mm. It's Town amazing. and otherwise. It is. It's, it's extraordinary. It's extremely inspiring. Yeah. It's mm. wonderful. Yeah. 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 And uh, speaking of, there's still more land to save. Uh, uh -huh. And we have a, a project <laughs> um, right. uh, underway right now. The last line. to the Coysbrook Woodlands. Coysbrook. Coysbrook Woodlands is a beautiful uh, mm -hmm. preserve of about 27 acres right off Lothar Pav. Lothar Pav being, mm -hmm. I think, one of the more scenic roads in mm -hmm. town. There's mm -hmm. a map you can see. Yeah. So it already has and has had for um, uh, many years a beautiful trail loop. Mm -hmm. And especially this time of year as the leaves are changing, the tupelos mm -hmm. are changing color. Mm -hmm. Wander down that trail, folks, mm -hmm. and you get a, a glimpse across the Herring River, Coysbrook Marshes. Mm -hmm. Um, lots of windswept marsh views mm -hmm. and some really neat um, topography and habitats within this site, mm -hmm. whether it's Atlantic white cedar or red maple, mm -hmm. a vernal pool tucked in the Atlantic white cedar wetland, mm -hmm. um, pine oak uh, woodland throughout. And this lot, mm -hmm. last one in this assemblage. Mm -hmm. So um, it's the little red tail on the map. That right? is right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we've been watching this lot, geez, since mm -hmm. this assemblage was first starting to be uh, put together uh, back in 1997. Wow. And so wow. now here we are That's with an opportunity pressure. to preserve the lot. On it uh, is a variety of, of uh, creatures, that uh, wildlife, mm -hmm. plant communities that would benefit from preservation, whether it's mm -hmm. the fiddler crab there mm -hmm. along the marsh edge. You saw butterfly weed in the last photo. Mm -hmm. If you look real close in that butterfly weed blossom cluster, mm -hmm. there's a caterpillar. So uh -huh. monarch butterflies, they're caterpillars, right? Mm -hmm. They feed mm -hmm. exclusively on plants from the milkweed family. So very important species to mm -hmm. um, uh, encourage, protect. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. and encourage. Praying mantis, that may also be uh -huh. on site. This actually was taken at the Cornelius, but um, the habitat uh, um, will be conducive to those. Health, yeah. Yes, yeah. of this last lot at yeah. Coysbrook Woodlands uh, it is key, not only in and of itself as a one acre lot, but also adjacent to the Coysbrook Woodlands assembly. This is a Cooper's hawk. Uh, mm. Woodland hawks, you can see the banded tail, one of the uh, oh. distinguishing field mm. identification marks for this hawk. Mm. Uh, this was taken right at Coysbrook Woodlands. All these photos mm. of the wildlife there mm -hmm. um, were, were taken on site. Um, Cattails right mm -hmm. off the edge mm -hmm. of this property. This is where a marsh wren will build its nest, maybe three feet or more above the high tide water mark in mm -hmm. elliptical mm -hmm. dome shaped nests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, preserving this lot not only helps to protect habitat for all of those species that you mm -hmm. saw and more, mm -hmm. also helps extinguish a um, septic system in the sensitive Herring River watershed. Mm -hmm. Also, helps really protect the visitor experience to that trail system. Mm -hmm. So, we have okay. 180,000 to okay. raise okay. by All December right. 31st, mm -hmm. but we have uh, about a half dozen folks mm -hmm. who have assembled a challenge fund mm -hmm. of 90,000. 90,000 being half of 180,000. A kind of a matching. That group. is right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're in the process of raising the match mm -hmm. to earn the 90,000. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, 90,000 to raise. In matching mm. funds and toward that 90,000 matching fund goal, we've raised about five. Uh -huh. So it's uh -huh. getting better all the time. Okay, it so is. So we have oh, about 85,000 left to raise toward the matching fund goal. And it's this is all on our website, harwichconservationtrust.org. Okay. Right. But it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderfully exciting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sure it will come through and uh, urge people, obviously, to uh, help out with this because it seems like a wonderful uh, cap off to that incredible. Um, property. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's a beautiful site. It really yes. is. Yeah. And yeah. Diana, we're hosting walks on the property throughout the end of the year. So um, uh -huh. if folks will check our website, they will they'll uh, see those walks taking place. There's a walk this Saturday, October mm. 5th, mm -hmm. with uh, um, Rich Eldred, um, mm -hmm. a botany walk. Mm -hmm. right. And then 
We'll be holding some other walks later in October, November. Mm -hmm. Yep, so s stay tuned to the website. And, and I all think that Saturday is supposed to be a sunny day at this moment, yes. right? That's, That's what I've heard. Right. We're hoping. We <laughs> actually finally got a little rain, but um, Saturday is supposed to be a bright spot, I believe. Mm. So that'll be great. Yeah. It'll be nice if people want to do that walk. Mm. They check out the uh, website, right? Yes, thanks. Okay. Thanks yeah. so much. Thank you. Well, thank you mm. for coming. Mm. This is Diana Lane for Channel 18. Thank you so much. And we have to thank Michael, Tyler, and of course Dinah for yes. bringing us up to date. That's um, uh, that's a I guess a very nice place over there. The, yes. The woodlands. Yes, um, that's wonderful. Acres, that's a good uh, good size. That's, yeah. Uh, they do wonderful work, and uh, you know I say it every time. The photography that we get to see is just great. I know. I know they do do an amazing job. They do. So you have some important announcements there. I do. There is going to be a blood drive right here at the Howard Community Center, sponsored by the Cape Cod Healthcare Nicholas G. Zaros Blood Center, Blood Donor Center. Sorry, what's donated here stays here on the Cape, and that's good to know. The blood drive is going to be happening on Monday, October 28th, from 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. There will be a complimentary gift card for Cumberland Farms for those who donate, and you can um, call them at 508 862 Five six six three, or you can go online to capecodhealth.org forward slash give dash blood. Uh, you can like them on Facebook as well, face, facebook.com forward slash Cape Cod Blood Center. And every pint of blood donated to them stays on Cape Cod to serve our community and save the lives of our family, friends, and neighbors. Very good. Yes, so that is Blood Drive, Monday, October 28th, 10 to 4 right here at the community center on Oak Street. Great. And you have one, another one there? I do. Oh, There's an exciting happening uh, going to be uh, going on at the Cape Cod Theater Company, home of the Howard Junior Theater. It is the world premiere of Crude, the climate change musical, an official selection of the New York Musical Festival. The book of music is by Maureen Condon and it is going to be happening from October 10th to November 10th, and it will be at the theater. Uh, so if you are interested and you would like to buy tickets, it will be um, Thursdays at 7 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays at 7.30, and Sundays at 2. Uh, you can call the box office at 508-432-2002, or go online to capecodtheatercompany.org, and theater is spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-E. Just so you know that, all right? I use the phone number 508-432-2002. There you go. And uh, I'm sure that is going to be quite an experience. Yes, I know. We, She's a very talented oh, gal, Maureen Condon. That's what I was going to say. We yes. know her personally, and her mm -hmm. talent is just amazing. I think she said there's 22. We yeah. have tickets. We have our tickets already. Oh, yeah. We're excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, very good. Um, this uh, happens every year, and we're going to announce it again for this year. Monomoy Dollars for Scholars, the conti continuing education scholarship application deadline looms ahead. Monomoy Dollars for Scholars applications for their continuing education scholarships uh, will be the deadline of October 15th, so it's coming up. Uh, scholarships will be awarded in December. Uh, and it's eligible graduates of Monomoy Regional High School, Chatham High School, well, Monomoy Regional High School. So, um, so residents of Chatham or Harwich who graduated from neighboring schools are eligible. Oh, okay. And uh, these scholarships are for college students entering their second, third, fourth year in an accredited two or four year school. So there are some guidelines there, and uh, you certainly uh, can get more information. And they're also accepting donations. You can donate to Monomoy Dollars for Scholars, uh, may be sent to P.O. 44, North Chatham, Mass., 02650. Every dollar donated or memorial gift will be appreciated. And they're a 501c3 organization. So um, it's a very valuable uh, organization. Yes, it really definitely. Is. So, okay. And I have, I have, this one looks wonderful. This is a new fundraiser. This is the first time I've seen this. Uh, join us for the Children's Center second annual 
don't remember it last year, but I guess this, they had it last year. It's called Forks and Corks for Kids. Sunday, November 3rd, so mark your calendar, um, from 4.30 to 6.30 at the Harwich Cultural Center. Uh, it's $30 per ticket for food and wine and silent and live auctions and a drawing. Uh, tickets can be purchased online at uh, www.hech.org or by calling 508-432-0015, extension 102. Um, come join delicious food and wine while you support a vital community resource. And um, their sponsors, I should probably mention their sponsors. Mm -hmm. I think uh, that would Zudi, be nice. Cape Cod 5, <clears throat> uh, Sanders, Walsh, and Eaton, uh, Main Street Wine and Gourmet, Moon. kids and uh, just a great uh, uh, effort for the Children's Center and yes. uh, that's really valuable. So we now turn to what's going on uh, with our Alzheimer's family support. Melissa Weidman uh, sat down with uh, Dinah to bring us up to date. They do have a walk that's going to be happening so that's going to be one of the things they talk about so let's take a look. Hello. I'm here with Melissa Weidman of the Alzheimer's Family Support Center of Cape Cod. And uh, she is here to talk a little bit about what the services are that the center provides and also to talk about a couple of special events that are coming up very soon. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you. So nice to meet you. So happy to be here. I've heard a lot about this center and I'm really excited to hear more specifics. Well, we're very proud of the fact that the Alzheimer's Family Support Center has now been here on Cape Cod serving caregivers and family members for five years. Mm. And we just collected our statistics for part of this year and already we've seen that we have over 600 mm. support group sessions that we've provided. Mm -hmm. We've done um, you know, over a thousand client contacts per month. Wow. We've done uh, hundreds of memory screenings. Mm -hmm. We have a countless, I, I don't even have the numbers on how many consultations, both one-on-one -on -one and for the whole family. Um, mm. We have seven sessions of six, six sessions for each seven <laughs> groups of, uh -huh. of savvy I caregiver trainings. Uh -huh. I see. And um, all of our services are free. Oh. So we just see that right now there's over 10,000 people diagnosed with some form of memory impairment. Mm. So we serve people with any form of memory impairment mm -hmm. and their family members and caregivers mm -hmm. Um, whoever they consider their family members mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and give them self-identify yeah. yeah and mm -hmm. we give them training education awareness of mm. the resources um, and talk them through what's really the biggest caregiving challenge mm -hmm. that people have mm -hmm. which is to care for someone who is changing in front of their eyes might be physically healthy, mm -hmm. but there's different ways of communicating mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. once caregivers can understand their self-care mm -hmm. and ways that they can be more supportive mm -hmm. to each other and to their loved ones can help reduce part of the burden. That's mm -hmm. our goal and that's why we do this all for free. Oh, it, it's absolutely wonderful. It's so great and you've been here for five years and people are really finding you sounds yeah. like yes yeah. we're getting yeah. calls yes and, yeah and it's such a need yeah uh, clearly such a need so people can yeah. come to our office in Brewster mm -hmm. we also go and meet with folks mm -hmm. uh, we have office hours at neurologists of Cape Cod in Hyannis um, all over the Cape mm -hmm. and um, we're serving we have services in every town now so when you do these meetings, the large group meetings, you talk about where is that actually located? Is that in your uh, 6A uh, no, we facility? Have, or we have uh, support groups in every town. I see. Okay. So, so you identify different places in each yeah, town. Yeah. A lot uh -huh. of times it's in councils on aging, uh -huh. um, 
or a community or center or community or centers mm -hmm. we're starting I see in churches now. so you're going to the people absolutely yep. okay yeah. but if people need to find those services they can come to you or uh, call us. Con contact you is call what us I need or to go say. to our yes. website mm -hmm. yeah okay so it's a huge need yes it and is. as far as we know we're the only model of this kind that does these sort of services for caregivers for free Wow. Uh, really anywhere. Uh, I yeah. have not heard of anyone else doing this. That's extraordinary. And yeah. so what we run into is people mm -hmm. go, how can you do this? Mm -hmm. How is it possible yes. to provide these things? And how do you free? answer that? So <laughs> <laughs> um, we are just so grateful for the support of the community. Mm -hmm. um, that includes um, you know, individuals who are touched by this disease, mm -hmm. who want to help support us. We're a 501c3 mm -hmm. uh, local nonprofit. Uh, we don't have a headquarters off Cape. We don't mm -hmm. have, you know, a, a big infrastructure. We're yes. very grassroots. Uh -huh. um, so 85% of the funds that are donated to us go mm -hmm. directly to services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we write grants and proposals. Mm -hmm. We network with lots of other mm -hmm. nonprofits. And we have events. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. yes, and you have a few coming up. Yes. Actually, you have a big one. Absolutely. And then a mini event uh, that goes associated with it. with it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, can you tell us about that? Absolutely. I know it's in October. So on Sunday, October 20th, mm -hmm. we are having our biggest event of the year which is our Walk for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. it, we hold it in Provincetown, and people come from all over the region. Mm -hmm. We already have about 70 teams registered, and this is three weeks away, mm -hmm. and those are all mostly from Upper and, and Mid-Cape, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and more now we'll be going to Provincetown and Lower Cape, uh -huh. um, because I the see. whole community comes out. Yes, yes. And what it's it certainly is, raising visibility to do it. Absolutely. To do it down there. Yep. You know, last year we had about 400 people. Mm. This year we anticipate to have probably many. Mm -hmm. um, because our visibility is so much bigger, one thing I didn't mention is we held a big training in Hyannis in June, mm. brought in the top dementia trainer in the country for a full day of training, mm. Tifa Snow. Anybody mm. who knows of her, just mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. amazing mm. and 1200 people registered oh for my that. goodness oh. so the need is profound it is here. profound yes um so we want to celebrate our caregivers and what we say is you don't have to donate to walk you can mm -hmm. just come and be part of the fun mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have um mm. a big catered lunch a live big band, mm -hmm. the sound dunes. The sound dunes. See, so are fabulous. Going there, yeah. mm -hmm. And people dance. It's not like other walks where mm -hmm. everybody sort of hangs out with just their team, does the walk. And mm -hmm. in our case, it's not a very athletic walk. It's just 3K mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from the middle of, right in front of Town Hall to the end of Commercial Street and mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. For people who don't want to walk or can't walk, mm -hmm. we have trolleys. And we so wave people can join and in, sing, yeah. and we have a lot of. Fun. There are many ways to participate, but um, for people who do want to help support these services mm -hmm. to ensure that they continue, we really appreciate um, whatever donations. There's no minimum. There's no fees. Mm -hmm. And this year, we're doing a much better job of getting people online CrowdRise pages that we'll mm -hmm. make. We don't have to be technical. <laughs> All we need is just a few little pieces of information and we make an online page and send that to people and then they can mm. post, post it on their social media or email mm -hmm. it to people mm -hmm. and if they get pledges then, then that's okay. part of it. And then the night before um, on Saturday October 19th mm -hmm. we are bringing up an actress from New York City whose name is uh, Melinda Buckley. I've seen this show before. She wrote this one woman mm. uh, memoir of taking care of her mother and mm -hmm. it's funny, it's mm. moving, she sings, she does a little dancing, mm -hmm. it's really entertaining and um, mm -hmm. informational in its own way mm -hmm. and um, that's a suggested donation of twenty dollars but you know it's for mm -hmm. anybody who uh, wants to come and we need to make reservations for that and that's at right. Fisherman's Hall in Provincetown on the afternoon of the 19th okay. at 4 p.m. Okay, great. 
and the the meeting place for the walk itself is the Provincetown Town Hall. Is that right? Right, right in front of the steps okay. of Town Hall mm -hmm. at 11 a.m. on okay. Sunday, mm -hmm. October 20th. Mm -hmm. um, that's so all. If, if people are inspired to start their own team, they can do that now. They could do that now, yep. and a team can be just one or two people. Sure. It can be. Um, as many folks as you want, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and it's not like you have to train, and mm -hmm. you know it's very informal, very easy. Right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, it's not. Don't need to start walking now. No. Although <laughs> it might be a good idea anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we we say we welcome all abilities, mm -hmm. all ages, yeah, and all species. So ah, dogs. Ah, are welcome. Oh, very good. No sharks. Right. But <laughs> yeah, so it's really all inclusive, and this Absolutely. is part of your model. It Everything sounds like we too. do, yes, all of our trainings, our mm -hmm. support groups, are all dementia friendly mm -hmm. because it's very important for caregivers. They may not be able to get out to take a break, mm -hmm. so yeah. we always have a respite session mm. happening simultaneously with any of our activities. I see. Okay. Um, so. People That lead the support groups. Okay, and, and those will be held in the town hall. Is that is that where they'll be held? The the support groups on that day? No, no, no. We aren't going to have support groups on that. Oh, day. oh, I see. The I support see. groups You're that talking we have about. All, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. The services that we. I see. Of course. Yeah. Right. I thought you were talking about the walk itself. No, on the no. walk itself, yes. we're going to eat and yes. and everyone and can participate to their to their best ability and have yes. fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a wonderful opportunity mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. whole community to come together. Yes, it certainly And is. take care of these many, many people that we have all over the Cape mm -hmm. that uh, are often isolated. Right. Caregivers can usually yes. not take care of themselves the way that they mm -hmm. should. Mm -hmm. um, so we give them a lot of strategies and support and just be there for them so that right. when they're feeling like, how am I going to do this, yeah. they have someone to call someone yes. to talk to to mm -hmm. know they don't have to travel this path alone. Yes, they have the yes. Support. So we like to say, until there's a cure, mm -hmm. there's community. Mm -hmm. And that's all of us together. That's a great mantra. And I do know uh, people who have availed themselves of the service and feel that it's a real lifeline for them. They have previously felt very isolated and it's like it just opens up their, their life and their world to have yeah. that available. You know, it's just, a wonderful thing. I've, I've been in this situation myself. Mm -hmm. and to have someone I know I can count on yeah. to call and say, hey, you know, this has changed. What mm -hmm. does it mean? Mm -hmm. What are the resources out there? What yeah. are my choices for who mm -hmm. I can call? We yeah. up in one place. Yeah. And so it is really a, a tremendous uh, comfort. Yes. What a wonderful thing to know about. And I, I hope that people will really utilize this. So thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Yeah. Hope to see you in Provincetown on October I, 20th. I would like to do that. Yeah, Thanks, thanks for really inviting me. It. Yeah, I would be very interested to see. I'm sure it's a wonderful event. Yeah, so. all of us at the Alzheimer's Family Support Center really appreciate mm -hmm. community television and mm -hmm. all the, the different things that right. everyone does. So right. thank you. Okay, thank you. So this was Melissa Weidman for the, family, the Alzheimer's Family Support Center of Cape Cod. And I am Dinah Lane for Harwich Channel 18. Thank you. You know, it is so important to do research for that disease. Yes, and, it is. Uh, you know, supporting that fundraiser walk is re really important. Yes, so. but in the Cape, we yeah, have a... That's, that's for sure. We have yeah. that uh, generation yeah, that... Yes. Yes, uh, Alzheimer's can very, happen. Yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Go All on. right, I yes. have another announcement. Oh boy. The Howard Historical Society Graveyard Tours are going to be taking place on the grounds of the Brooks Academy Museum on Saturday, October 5th and again on Saturday, October 19th. The times of the tours will be the same, 4, 4.30 and 5. You can call 508-432-8089 to reserve your date and time. The admission is $10 and you will come in of Sidney Brooks, Nathaniel Doan, Lucy Broad Brooks, and others in their place in our town history. It's a lot of fun, and uh, I think Peg Rose is going to be telling us more about that in a clip right after we say goodbye. Yes, yeah, so that's our show for this week, everybody. We really appreciate you joining us. 
on behalf of all of us here at Channel 18. And uh, as Eileen mentioned just a couple of seconds ago, uh, Peg Rose will be sitting down with Diner to give us more information uh, the, what the Historical Society is up to. So again, thank you for joining us. And please take advantage of everything we're telling you about today that's going on in our little town of Harwich. Bye-bye. Bye-bye for now. Hello. I'm here with Peg Rose, the acting director of the Harwich Historical Society. And uh, Peg has come in to talk to us about an event that's coming up soon. So uh, it's very nice to see you here. Thank you, you so much oh, for coming. Oh, thank you. Yeah. The... So yes, uh, it is now October. Mm -hmm. So it's time for our the Historical Society's graveyard tour. We've done them for many years. This year they're going to be on Saturday, October 5th and Saturday, October 19th. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, times of the tours are 4 o'clock, 4.30, and 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You do need to call, if you want to come, you do need to call the museum to make reservations because we can only take, uh, you know, mm -hmm. because... So we, many people. Yes, mm -hmm. in each time slot because if you get too many, the people in the back can hear what the right. uh, reenactor is saying. Yes. So, so you have reenactors. Oh yes, mm -hmm. they're all. Some of them have done it uh, for for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, and every year we try and work in a few new people. I see. So in essence, they have risen from the grave. Oh yes. To speak to us. Yes. Okay. All so, right. Great. And uh, admission is ten dollars. Okay, so. and uh, register by calling 508-432-8089. That will do it. Is that right? Yes, we will get back to you. The uh, office coverage is, um, you know, we don't have anybody there 24-7, mm. so to speak. But so we leave a message. Leave a message. We will call you back uh, mm -hmm. to, to confirm. With a particular time, and yes. they should leave the time that they would like Their to come? name, the time, mm -hmm. and uh, phone number. Okay. Which is so that you can which respond. Is vital. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So. Well, this sounds sounds great. Can you can you speak a little bit about the particular people who might we might be expecting to see on these well, tours? Well, uh, new this year, mm -hmm. and I can't remember her name, but the interim pastor at First Congregational oh, Church uh -huh. is going to going to be one. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil, and who will she be reenacting? Uh, I think she's doing the wife of uh, the wife of uh, one of the pastors. Oh, I see. Well, sorta. that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. And we have Phil Idman, who works at the library. He's mm -hmm. Sidney Brooks um, oh, uh -huh. e every year, but Great. Uh, mm -hmm. you know it's very important to know. You know who who these mm -hmm. who Sidney Brooks is if you yes. if you didn't know yeah. already, and uh, then we okay. have uh, about four I think it's about four others so there's mm -hmm. a total of like right. a half a dozen or so quite a cast of characters yes great and, and characters they are <laughs> <laughs> well that will be great for people to learn about the history yes. of the town yeah. and some of the people who made it happen yes exactly a huge impact on mm -hmm. our lives today I'm sure yes okay just want to put in a plug that tomorrow is the last farmers market of the season oh, at yeah. at, uh, mm -hmm. at the historical society and mm -hmm. then the farmers will go away until next year but uh, <laughs> tomorrow tomorrow is your last chance they'll be convening there yeah. at the farmers market <laughs> yes yep. okay okay well good to know and thank you so much peg for coming okay. in and telling us about this thank you appreciate it this is Dinah Lane for Harwich Channel 18.